further ado, we hope we're going to get started. So welcome to Eliminating Bad Hires. My name is Emily Sikorsi. I'm the Vice President of Corporate Communication for TTI Success Insights. And I'm here with Adam Wong, our Vice President. Hello, and everybody. Pleasure to be here today. So we want to welcome you again and just let you know a few housekeeping items before we get started. First of all, we will be live tweeting this um, webinar and we are using the hashtag TTISI chat. So again, it's hashtag TTSI chat. We use that hashtag for all of our um, all of our uh, webinars that we do. So if you search it, you'll see our our previous webinars as well as all of our live tweets from this one. We um, we also have on this next screen. Here you go. We also have our um, hash or our handles, Adam and mine. So find us on Twitter if you want to tweet out to us during the session. This is a very interactive um, discussion, so we will have some poll questions for you to answer and some um, opportunities for you to weigh in on the topic of eliminating bad hires. So look for those, and we should have the poll questions pop up on the screen. Um, and just before we begin, I want to tell you a little bit about um, TTI. So we believe that all people have unique talents and skills of which they're often unaware. So we exist to reveal and harness those talents using something that we call the science of self. So what is that? Well, for over 30 years, we have conducted human and behavioral research, and we have um, used that research to create assessments that measure behaviors, motivators, EQ, acumen, skills. And so we, uh, our assessments are in place in over um, 90 countries and 40 different languages through a network of 7,000 distributors worldwide, and they're helping organizations increase their productivity, their engagement, performance, and profits. And our um, one of our, our research has driven us to also get into that recruiting and hiring space, and we recently relaunched a product called TMP, Talent Management Plus, which is the basis of a lot of our research um, recently about hiring, creating talent matches, eliminating bad hires, and that's what we're here to talk to you about today. So it's just a little bit about us to set the table, and then we will uh, kind of just jump right into our uh, to our slides here, Adam. Yeah. So why are we here today? Let's start with why. So you talked about the evolution of the assessments quite a bit, mm -hmm. and we've seen a big trend of more and more companies are starting to use the assessments for hiring, right? So, so they're they're mm -hmm. having a hard time yes. finding people to do many jobs. You know, mm -hmm. jobs today, uh, they expect a lot more than they typically did about 10, 15 years ago. Right, yeah. And with all these startup companies mm -hmm. and just the lean way of doing work, that's true. People are, companies are now looking for people that can add a lot of value mm -hmm. and are multifaceted mm -hmm. and can do several types of jobs. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, we've got this going on. So 80% of employee turnover is due to just bad hires. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I mean, think think of your hiring practices these days. What is the hiring practice? Many companies don't even have one. They don't have any kind of process. Well, that may lead to bad hires mm -hmm. where they shouldn't have hired the person in the first place. Right. There are dozens and dozens of reasons of, of why bad hires are made, mm -hmm. and our goal is to eliminate those. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. So our first poll question um, is going to launch right now, just a second. Um, so here we go. It's popping up on your screen momentarily. So for you, what is your annual employee turnover? So go ahead and weigh in on that poll question. So select one of the following, 0 to 25, 25 26 to 50, 51 to 75, 76 to 100, or maybe you just don't know. Maybe you don't track it. Yes. But what is your annual employee turnover? Yeah, so we have some of you have smaller businesses, maybe in the smaller range, but definitely some people that are on the larger side that are going to have more employees and more turnover. Mm -hmm. And give another few seconds. See. There we go. All right. We're going to share the results. Ah, All right. Okay. So a large majority of you in that top range, 0 to 25, 77%. Uh, mm -hmm. Looks like we have a yep. few in the 51 to 75 range. That's a lot. Yeah. 51 to 75, 75 bad, hi bad mm -hmm. hires. Mm -hmm. And then uh, nobody in, the, in that, top, that 76 to 100 range, which is that's a lot of employees. Certainly is. And then those that don't know, mm -hmm. those that don't know. Yeah. And we did say turnover. We didn't necessarily say bad hires, so we recognize that that could be a lot of different factors. So we have one more poll question right now, just right off the bat. So in your experience, how much does it cost to replace a bad hire? 
So again, select one of the following categories here. So in your estimation, if you're involved with the hiring process inside of your organization, how much does it cost you to replace that bad hire? So go ahead and weigh in there, give it a couple more seconds. That should be showing up on your screen. All right, we've got 58% voting. Thank you everyone for voting. We're gonna go ahead and close that poll and share the results. We have here. So less than 20, oh, it's a pretty even mix. It is. So less than $25,000 or 26%, mm -hmm. another 26% over a 26 to $50,000, very costly. Mm -hmm. And then 51,000 to 100,000, 29%. And that's one wow. bad hire. Wow. And the previous mm -hmm. slide just showed us the turnover. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we can all do the math and see how this adds up very, very quickly. Right. And that goes to our next slide, which is that the cost to replace a bad hire can be up to five times that person's salary in our research. So uh, we saw those numbers borne out in that poll right there. Absolutely. So seeing how costly it is uh, when you do hire the wrong person or if there's this natural turnover. So right. we got to do whatever we can to, to make sure we're hiring the right people. Now from a broader scale, we've uh, did some research prior to the, the webinar and found that, you know, in the U.S. this can cost up to $300 billion annually for U.S. businesses. So bad hires are not just obviously isolated to the company, but, you know, the, the economy can really suffer when we, when we are hiring poorly across the board. Extremely, extremely poorly. Mm -hmm. And then in small companies, so this, this was really interesting, Adam, that $190,000, the cost of a bad hire can be worse for small companies mm -hmm. because as you were mentioning before, they work very leanly. Somebody might be doing three or four different roles. So this can really add up for a small business. Absolutely. And, and that cost can be extremely critical to that small business. You know, if they're already operating lean mm -hmm. and if that person, if they lose a person who is really valuable now, they and that person may have done two or three different jobs functions right. how difficult is it going to be to find somebody that can replace those two or three different job right. functions and wear all those hats and then mm -hmm. also the time it's going to take for them to get up to speed on all those different levels maybe they're great in one and two but the third one is going to take more time and training and onboarding yes yeah, so it's typically in smaller companies you, you just take the work as it comes along mm -hmm. right so, so you take work as it comes to you and you will share you will share responsibilities as it comes to you mm -hmm. uh, and unfortunately many small businesses they tend to maybe not uh higher for the future as often, mm. but rather higher to succeed right now. Oh, that's and true. in doing that, you take on more responsibilities per role. Mm -hmm. so, that's uh, true. That's yeah. true. So why is this occurring? Why are we so um, rushed maybe to hire? Or why why do bad hires happen? So we, we found this survey. It's a 2014 survey from CareerBuilder that had some interesting insights into this. They talked to 6,000 HR professionals globally, and they found these reasons. So they... Top reason. People need to fill that position mm -hmm. fast. Mm -hmm. They lost somebody or they have some immediate work mm -hmm. and they have to fill the position. They just want a body. Mm -hmm. They're literally looking for a body to fill a position. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and 34 is the very vague, just didn't work out. Right. <laughs> it didn't work. And why didn't yeah. it work out? Yeah, we That'll don't vary. know. That's so interesting. 21%, um, the company did not test or research the employee's skills well enough. Absolutely. So this one obviously jumped out to us as we're in the business of assessing people's skills. Yeah, yeah. assessing their skills, you know, and sometimes even asking simple questions, mm -hmm. you know, such as technology. You have to make a joke to us. <laughs> right. We do webinars every week every and yeah. we, we stumbled this morning, so, so apologize. Yeah, yeah. You got to see how the sausage is made here. <laughs> um, and then finally, 11%, the company didn't perform an adequate reference check. Reference check, mm -hmm. absolutely. And yeah. we could probably even add background check to that as well. I know yep. more and more companies are starting to use background checks as well. Definitely. Yeah. So this is the situation that we're sort of all in right now. Um, so we're going to sort of move now into what we have put together, what we've come about to find through our research and our work over the last 30 years, which are that today we have hiring practices that are based around some just basic untruths. We'll call them myths. Um, and these myths really blind us. They, they bias us and they dictate kind of a, a poor outcome as we've, as we've just seen through these statistics. So what we want to do is we want to blow up these myths, really knock them down so we can start rebuilding the hiring process in a more uh, in a better way, more efficient way. So the first myth, myth number one. The unicorn um, myth. <laughs> the mythical unicorn. Um, that the hiring process starts with a job description, right, Adam? Yes. Yeah, so, so think of you that are sitting listening to this webinar. If you had to hire somebody and you wanted to start looking next week, what's the first step you're going to take? 
most people are going to go look at the job ad they use the last time they hired somebody in that position mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. they'll go Google. Right. If you're right. looking for a salesperson, you might go Google salesperson yeah. job ad sure. and use that job description. Mm -hmm. So what does that do? You know, is that job description specific to your company? Is that even the right way to go? Do right. you even need that role to be filled at this time? Was it written like 10 years ago and now exactly. it's just been recycled, but the job has changed. Exactly. And so we're, we're inherently hiring from a bad description. You say the step, step yeah. one, you just got to clearly identify why the role exists in the company. How does it align with your vision? And really what are the three people going to do that are in this job? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then from there you can build on the job description. Yes. Okay. Somebody just asked too what that hashtag was. It is TTISI chat. So let's move on to the next myth that we want to debunk. I am unbiased when I hire. I'm totally unbiased, Adam. I think we like to think that we can. We're, we're all, uh, we all can know when we find a good person, mm -hmm. right? That we have, we can look at their character and we, uh, we're good with people. But what happens you get into that interview and you mm -hmm. find some commonalities? Uh, so maybe you enjoy playing basketball and you just happen to interview somebody and they're on a basketball team in a town near you, so you have something in common. Mm -hmm. And uh, so people start to hire people or at least move them through the interview process yeah. if they have commonalities. And I've heard Bill say, our CEO often says, the people that you interview, you're much more likely to hire. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you left a resume behind it or a, um, an application behind, you never interviewed them, um, you're just much more likely to interview the people that you see that you take time with. Absolutely. So we go into interviews, we always recommend have a structured set of interview questions prepared. Mm -hmm. And if you're interviewing multiple people for the same job, definitely mm -hmm. make sure you ask them all the same questions. Oh, yeah. The basic one. Yeah. Okay, next myth. Oh, I like this one. The aliens. Um, my, number three, my hiring process. Hey, it's not perfect. But you know what? It's, hey, it's good enough. So what is good enough? <laughs> That's a good question. Right? So, so would you say the same thing for your product? Like, oh, my product isn't perfect, but it's good enough for now. You know, so, so what is good enough? Do you have the best people? Is your company or is your department operating at the level you want it to operate at? Mm -hmm. And what are you doing to find those people that are just good enough? Right. Yeah, and there's a lot of critical steps in the hiring process that can be often overlooked. And some one is the hiring too quickly. So do you have those people that are good that are actually good enough? And I think too, when you start out with just good enough, then there are holes inside of there that um, you know can can kind of get bigger and bigger and bigger if you're using that hiring process for the basis of training and development, which we'll talk about a little bit later on. But when mm -hmm. we start with just good enough, it does have a ripple effect in a negative way down the line. It does. And if you, if you have competitors, which we pretty much all have competitors, well, if your competitors are, are hiring a little better than just good enough, mm -hmm. that may be a distinguisher, mm -hmm. a differentiator compared to you. All right. So our next myth, the mermaids. My daughter is like mermaids, so they would love this one. <laughs> Myth number four, of all the resumes received, we ended up with the best candidates. And how, and how do you know that, right? What objective information are you using to determine that you ended up with the best candidate? But another question is, how many resumes did you actually receive? Mm -hmm. You know, we oftentimes ask our customers, you know, how many applicants are you typically looking at when you're looking to hire for a job? Some say as little as five, mm -hmm. like literally five applicants and have to make a decision based on five applicants where unfortunately, sometimes you live in, in an area where that's, that's the pool and mm -hmm. that's the pool. Yes. But I would say, take your time. Mm -hmm. I think we have a motto is hire slow, fire quickly if you need to. Yes. Yeah. So at this point, we have another poll question that's going to launch. So for you out there on the webinar, how long does your hiring process typically take? So go ahead and select one of the following, less than a week, one to four weeks, five to 10, or more than 10 weeks. So go ahead and let us know uh, how long your hiring process typically takes. Um, some people may be able to do it rather quickly. Others, Adam said, maybe they're slower moving and uh, more focused on the, the, uh, the after effects. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and close the poll and then share the results with everyone. Very interesting. All right. Okay. So we have um, the vast majority say one to four weeks, 65%. Mm -hmm. And then five to 10 weeks, 30%. And then looks like less than a week or more than 10 weeks of the outliers there. Yeah. So less than a week, 3%. Uh, and I, I kind of wonder what kind of people they're hiring or what kind of position it is. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe that's one of those positions that has a lot of turnover. Mm -hmm. So uh, they hire people very quickly. Mm -hmm. We tend to see a lot of call centers mm -hmm. have turnover. Therefore, mm -hmm. they hire quickly. 
And then the more than 10 weeks. And I wonder if that's a standard position or if is that an executive position. Executive level position. Right. Uh -huh. Yeah, and kind of what that hiring process looks like. So it's interesting. Mm -hmm. So the average right in that that four to five brief range yeah, is what we that, typically that hear. That really holds true from the research that we've, we've done. So now this is a question for you to type in your answers. And sorry, we didn't see your answers before, but this time we're watching very closely. Um, go ahead and type in your responses to this question. What efficiencies or tricks do you have that um, allow you to save time um, in your hiring process? So what have you found to be effective for you um, and in your hiring process. Mm -hmm. So what's worked if you've, if you've kind of set out to, to make your process more efficient? So as those come in, we'll go ahead and share those out. In the meantime, let's go ahead and go to number five. So uh, there's a, there might be Bigfoot in this picture, I'm pretty sure. Um, so myth number five, hiring is time consuming money pit. Always, every time. <laughs> we right? get this every right? time. It's so time consuming. Mm -hmm. It takes too long to hire. Well, what's worse? If you hire the wrong person mm -hmm. and you have them for, for weeks, sometimes months, mm -hmm. and, and what's worse, having to manage that person while they're there, how costly was it to hire that person? Uh, so you really got to take your time. We do know sometimes you really need somebody, mm -hmm. but what's the better approach to take your right. time and hire the right person mm -hmm. or hire a body? But also, we kind of we push back against this idea that that's always true. When yes. you have an efficient process and the proper tools in place, it can be very streamlined. Yes, and so some of the 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 kind of tips that are coming through that people use is one is such as asking questions to the applicants right away, mm -hmm. and these can be as simple as emailing some inter emailing some questions to the applicants. Mm -hmm. This is a great way for you to see what their written communication skills are like. Also, if they'll respond within a timely manner, mm -hmm. if they can follow directions. We definitely like the uh, emailing interview questions. Right. What are some more um, we have Proper there? structure of interview questions to find the correct aptitude of the person. Very good. Thank you. Um, multiple people interviewing and collective agreement. Mm -hmm. on whether or not to proceed. That's that's very good. We're going to talk about that a little bit later. Um, personality and skills inventories, three interviewers. Uh, applicant tracking system is, is mentioned here as well. You know, I heard one just yesterday, just kind of coincidentally, is a personal SWOT analysis. Oh. So, mm -hmm. so the, the hiring manager or the recruiter will ask the employees to conduct their own personal SWOT. So kind of like you would for a company, sure. but the applicant has to conduct a SWOT analysis on themselves. Huh. Yeah. That's really, that's that's really creative. Very cool. And then, of course, we have, we have Skype interviews, phone interviews to cut mm -hmm. down on time. That's true. Because it's very important that uh, your in-person time, you want to make sure you're spending your in-person interviews with people who are actual viable candidates. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's go to the next one. Oh, the genie. Hiring tools are used <laughs> just for hiring. Yeah. Oh, such yeah. a myth. Right? Such oh, a myth. It is. I Tell guess, of course, more. depending on the tool, right? Mm -hmm. But most tools these days, uh, you can leverage them much deeper than just the hiring process. Mm -hmm. You can use them to onboard your employees appropriately. You can use them long term uh, for coaching. So hopefully the tools you're using, uh, they're providing you some type of information mm -hmm. about the person's skill set or what they or what they enjoy doing. And then you can use that for coaching and developing long term. Right, and if they're matched to the job, the skill from the beginning as part of the process, this is going to be a very, it's a roadmap, a veritable roadmap of how they're going to proceed in the job and what skills they need to focus on building and mm -hmm. what sort of aspects of their behavioral style they'll need to develop to be successful. And it also kind of lays the groundwork to have that, that discussion about where do you see yourself in this company in a few years? Mm -hmm. And where do, you, where do you think you want to go? And if they identify a path they like to go down, you can then revert back to saying, okay, if you want this path, here are the skill sets you're going to need. Mm -hmm. What do you have? Mm -hmm. And let's work on those skills. Mm -hmm. That's very powerful. All right. Let's see if we have any more before we leave our myths. Uh, I don't think we have any more suggestions, so we'll keep moving right along. So we encourage you to release all of these fictions. They are myths in our opinion and really look to the future. So let's talk a little bit about the future of hiring, what that What's looks the future? like in Absolutely. America. It was really interesting the other day. I was reading a blog about someone who had been uh, spent the last two weeks listening to startups do pitches to venture capital. And um, he identified four or five trends in all of those. I think he listened to 150 pitches. 
one of those trends was hiring mm-hmm. how uh, and a lot of startups in that space looking at the hiring process and how people get work in this country so i thought that was very very interesting so looking to the future Applicant tracking systems are are okay. Okay. I mean, typically what applicant tracking systems do is allow you to stay organized. You know, as your applicants are coming in, it's basically, it's a software. Mm-hmm. So you can track all your applicants as they come in. It may have some bells and whistles where you can, you can send out emails from the system mm-hmm. to save you some time. Mm-hmm. But ultimately, it doesn't typically help you hire the right person. Mm-hmm. It more okay. so just helps you file. File okay. all the applicants in an organized manner. Okay, yeah. I see. So it may save some time, but not so much helping hire the right person. Okay. So assessment use is is on the rise. And we've got a a statistic here from the Wall Street Journal. Uh, Large U.S. companies who use assessments as part of a hiring process. In 2001, there were only 21%. Yeah. And uh, this year, 57 as part of the hiring process. Now, we know that they have been on the rise in general use, Mm -hmm. but specifically connected to the hiring process, we're almost over over the majority here, 57%. Yeah, so with, with the use of technology, we've made it much easier for companies to use assessments in the hiring process. Uh, I know companies like ours, of course, have really focused on the reliability and the legality of use of assessments. Uh, so to make sure that you can actually use assessments uh, free willingly mm-hmm. in the hiring process. Mm-hmm. Of course, you just have to make sure that your assessments are uh, are legally compliant. Mm-hmm. And uh, But ultimately, you can use them in the hiring process and make decisions based off how well the person matches a job. Mm-hmm. And the mm-hmm. biggest companies are doing so. Yes, yeah. they are. So let's talk about safety and validity for just a moment. So mm-hmm. what does that mean in, in as far as assessments and hiring are concerned? Yes. Yeah, so we'll go into a little more detail. To boil it down, you need to make sure that the assessments are not discriminating towards any protected classes. Okay. So, for example, uh, if a male takes the assessment, we need to make sure that they don't score higher than the females if they take the assessment. Because we want to make sure that there's not going to be any group of people Mm -hmm. that will score better Mm -hmm. because the assessment is geared towards their group. Okay. Unfortunately, many assessments out there uh, do not have the safety and validity. So if you, they really should not be used for hiring. Okay. And, uh, and if you just Google hiring assessments, and there you are going to find some some companies that have experienced some challenges because mm-hmm. they were using assessments that weren't validated for for selection, as we refer to it. Yeah. In fact, Target was just uh, fined to the tune of I believe it was five million dollars based on uh, that very thing happening. So yeah. you, you do have to be careful, buyer beware. Yeah. And adverse impact. That's what you should be asking for of an assessment provider. Do they have an adverse impact study that proves that no group, one group as you were saying, exactly. is adversely impacted exactly by an assessment. All right. So the next generation is sort of a combination. Yeah, so you got to combine all these different practices. You look at your hiring process and and really determine what process works best for you. So you combine the interviews, you combine the assessments, and even multiple assessments. Mm-hmm. Uh, so many companies are using a variety of assessments. You know, mm-hmm. one might use a behaviors assessment, one might use a skill assessment. Uh, there are many companies that combine those together, as of course we do. Mm-hmm. So uh, we have kind of the full package assessments where you can you can look at behavior behaviors of a person, what motivates a person, Mm -hmm. the skills of a person, and then tie that in with what is their experience? Mm -hmm. And what's their education? What was it? What their resume look like? What's the interview look like? So all of this really comes together in the hiring process. So how to hire for job match. And so our philosophy is really to match people to work that will be intrinsically rewarding to them because of their primary behavioral style, their motivators in life, and their skill set. So we want to give you a few tips to to help you create job match in your hiring. So tip number one, Adam, ditch the job description, job mm-hmm. benchmark instead. What does that mean? What's a job benchmark? So yeah, ditch the job description. You don't want to just go list a whole lot of tasks that this job is going to be required to do, but rather start to really clarify, why does this role exist in my company? Ask yourself that question. Why does this role exist within the company? For example, the receptionist. We have a full-time receptionist. We love the receptionist. It does not exist just to answer phones. Mm -hmm. The role of the receptionist exists to provide great value, to provide great customer service, uh, to be a connection point for all of the team members in the organization, that's why it exists. Mm-hmm. So once we clearly identify why it exists, then we can identify what type of person, what type of behavioral style is going to be needed in this job. Mm-hmm. And what's really going to motivate that person in this job? 
-hmm. And then of course, skills. What's the skill set that we need? What's the core skill set? And those are just part of the job benchmark aspects I go into are really finding the right person. Mm -hmm. So start with identifying what does the job need? Then you compare the people to it. Oh, okay. Great. And then tip number two, be vigilant about matching talent to that benchmark. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so you establish the benchmarks. You, you know, okay, here's what we're looking for. We're mm-hmm. looking for maybe an extroverted person who can move quickly mm-hmm. and they're motivated by X, Y, and Z, or, mm-hmm. and they have these skills. Now that you have that set, now when your people come in and they're applying for the job, you compare them. You see how well do they match this job? Okay. And then, of course, we look at their experience, what's their education, et cetera. Mm-hmm. So this is just one piece of the puzzle. Mm-hmm. And so now, just to, to be clear, our TMP system that we've developed, it does all of this automatically. It does. So you have the job benchmarking built into the system. Mm-hmm. And then as you give applicants uh, you know, your link to take the, to take mm-hmm. the application for the job, yes. they take the assessment, and then it funnels them right in. So as they're coming in, it's comparing them and how well they match, and it gives you your best match at the top. And then the lower match on the bottom. Mm-hmm. So it saves an amazing amount of time because it allows you to quickly look at your applicants and then dive deep into the ones you want to dive into and then skip the ones that aren't a good match that you don't want to dive into. All right. Great. And then last tip here, involve, and some of, the, some of our um, participants mentioned this earlier, involve an unbiased person in the interview process who hasn't looked at any of the resumes. Yeah, that's so true. So this is going back to using objective information, just going into the interview process. You maybe uh, some people really get hung up on specific elements of the job they think are required, Mm -hmm. such as, oh, this person has to have a master's degree, Mm -hmm. or this person has to have at least 10 years experience, or we're not going to look at them. Mm -hmm. Uh, So it's nice to have a different viewpoint when they, when somebody goes into the interview process, uh, to just go with an open mind, maybe not looking for those specific hard requirements that typically bias more bias too. Okay. Yeah. All right. So those are our three tips that you can, you know, use right away to help you get rid of those myths, break them down and start your path on the way to a better hiring process. So at this point, we want to just share a little bit about talent management plus and how Mm -hmm. it sort of addresses and brings together all of these things. Yeah, so it's a very easy to use system where you know it does revolve around a job match, so job talent, job benchmarks, and you also can ask custom interview questions in there. Mm-hmm. It just saves so much time. It's easy to use when you're going to look for for applicants, going to look for hiring somebody. It's going to save you a whole lot of time, and I think that's what most of us need, especially hiring managers, entrepreneurs, mm-hmm. anybody hiring people. Of course, they need that time back. <laughs> that's right. All those those weeks that you mentioned before, and of course, yeah. you're going to hire the you have a better chance of hiring the right people. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. So um, demonstration is is worth more than words. So we do offer a free demonstration of our TMP system. If you're interested in that, just go to our website, tttmp.com backslash demo, or just click on demo. If you go to the main site, you fill out a little form and we will create a custom demo for you to be able to see how all of this works inside of the system. And then we'll also, of course, provide provide an assessment for you if you haven't already experienced an assessment so you can see what that looks like and get an idea of what applicants go through as they enter the systems. Absolutely. You always need to think about how your brand is represented out there. Mm-hmm. So that is critical for people to understand. Yes, indeed. So we would want to open it up to questions at this point. If you have any questions about the hiring process, the myths of hiring, or any of the statistics that we talked about today. I have a question just to kick it off here, Adam. How? Uh, what is probably the most common pain point that you hear from people with, who are hiring on a daily basis? And what is their most common challenge? I typically hear number of applicants mm-hmm. is they have so many applicants to go through, so many resumes to go through. I mean, think of how many job boards are out there these days. Yes. And how <laughs> long does it take right. to submit an application on a job board? Mm-hmm. If you go into Monster, Career Builder, you can literally apply for a job within 10 seconds. Sure. So all of these hiring managers are funneling through sometimes hundreds of applicants to nail it down to one hire. Mm-hmm. So they are just overflowing with resumes. Mm-hmm. And it takes a lot of time and just trying to save them as much time as we can. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Someone had a question or a comment earlier about interview questions. So um, does the TMP system 
do anything with interview questions. It absolutely does. Mm -hmm. So talking about the job benchmark again, you know, creating that ideal behavioral style, ideal skills we're looking for. Uh, we also provide interview questions mm -hmm. to really ch to really challenge the applicants. Mm -hmm. So we have interview questions tailored towards certain behavioral styles, oh. certain motivators, okay. certain skills. So then we sit down in the interview, you get to ask them uh, questions that are tailored directly back to the job and the job benchmark to see if they really have what it takes to be the right person for that job. Hmm, sounds like a rigorous process. It is, but it's but it's so streamlined that it, it happens pretty quickly. Yeah, that's great. So we have a question here. How does TMP integrate with or complement hiring systems like Taleo? So Taleo, those of you that don't know, it's, it's a very large enterprise system that companies use as applicant tracking. They also have other features built in. Uh, so there's several ways you can use this. We can look at integrating with your current applicant tracking system. So it's easy for you. It's streamlined for you. But some companies like to have two separate systems mm -hmm. where they have their general applicants in one, but then they have the ones they want to move along in the process in another. Mm -hmm. So we have those, those options. So fortunately, we have flexibility. Mm -hmm. And what we do is we tailor it to the client's needs. Mm -hmm. So we really have to find out what exactly they want, how they want it structured, what's important to them. Then we help them. Really accomplish that. And I've heard too, in some cases, that executive may for it's an executive search. Um, they may only use the top. You know, the top candidates would go in and have access to the system. Is that true? Yeah, that is true. Um, some companies use the use assessments or tools like this with their top candidates because uh, they see it as a, as a cost saving measure. Mm -hmm. But fortunately, the way that we we our priced our model is that we want you we want people to be able to assess everybody mm -hmm. a, a very cost in a very cost saving way. Mm -hmm. So this allows this allows us to be able to look at applicants in a deeper level, but all of them. If they truly want to all of them. That's mm -hmm. how it's priced that way too. Great. Yeah. Another question for you, Adam, how long can it take for an applicant to fill out a TMP application? Uh, we have plenty of options there. So it really depends on how much information do you want to gather from the applicant. Mm -hmm. So we have short assessments that are as short as 10 minutes, mm -hmm. but we have much longer assessments that go up to about 45 minutes if you really want to get a lot of information from the applicant. Mm -hmm. So it really depends on the position mm -hmm. and also how many applicants you expect to come in. Mm -hmm. So we have options 10 minutes to 45 minutes. Oh, okay. And if you're having 100 plus applicants for one job, how do we limit it to just the qualified candidates so not 100% take the assessment? Not sure. Maybe that was already. Yeah, so let's answered, say that again. So, so if, if you, you have over 100 people applying for one job, is there any way to limit to just the qualified candidates so not all 100% take the assessment? That would really be, we have to tailor that to that client specific process they're currently using. Mm -hmm. So they may be using an applicant tracking system and they want to sort through the resumes before they give assessments. Mm -hmm. If that's the case, they would sort through the resumes and then they would move whoever they want onto the next step of the process. Mm -hmm. And on that next step is where the assessments would begin. Mm -hmm. There's, uh, we currently don't have a way built into TMP to do this automatically, mm -hmm. uh, but fortunately, we we love innovation, so mm -hmm. we're constantly adding things as necessary. We are. Yeah. yeah. So somebody else asked if we were going to be showing the system live today. We aren't, um, but we are happy to set up that custom demo straight away for you to have that personalized experience. Um, can a person fill out an application without doing the assessment and send the assessment option as applicants are interested? Oh, you know, currently that's not a feature, but uh, I guess if that request comes along, mm -hmm. that would be something that we would look into. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Any other questions that you might have? Go ahead and, and type those in. Someone asked if the deck is going to be available, and absolutely we'll send that out in our post uh, webinar follow up email. Um, we'll have also a, have a recording of the video if you don't mention right. that. Mm -hmm. Yep, we will. I don't think I mentioned that in the beginning in all of our shuffling around. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, any other questions that you've you've heard come in in recent weeks? You know, I think you had most of the common questions mm -hmm. about what if I already have a system? How mm -hmm. does it work into mine? And it's always custom. We we tailor it to the client's needs. Uh, we well, we had questions such as what if I have. 10 different people that I want to use a system. How does that work? Mm -hmm. Will I be able to see all my other people's applicants or am I only going to see my applicants? Mm -hmm. That's customizable. Okay. So if you want to be able to see other people's applicants, we can do that mm -hmm. within your company, of course. Or if you want to keep your applicants for your department separate, we can keep your applicants for your department separate. So plenty of options and it's all integrated into your one account. 
So I just want to kind of go back and give you that web address one more time. So it's TTITMP.com backslash demo. If you'd like to sign up for a free, no obligation, just take a look, see if you like it, uh, road test of our TMP system. And um, also, again, we're available to you. Our uh, hashtag or our handles are all the way at the beginning, but I'll bring them up as we sort of close here. So I'm at Emily at large, and Adam is Adam Wong AZ. There we are. Next slide. There we go. If you'd like to reach out with uh, questions that you may have not had a chance to ask or um, anything else, but that will pretty much conclude it. Any closing thoughts, Adam? No, I think thank you very much for joining us this morning. Apologize for little technical difficulties at the beginning. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, thanks, and we look forward to doing some demos and taking some calls and hope some of you are interested. Thank you very much and have a wonderful Friday and a great weekend.